Hey, today I'm gonna answer the following question, and it goes like this. Simple question, Chris. Uh, do you most commonly use pre or post fader sands and why? Which color is which, orange or blue? That can be confusing for a lot, so let's check the difference between pre and post fader sands. Hey, what's up, my friend? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Uh, now, if you want to increase and speed up your mixing workflow, download my free workshop on how to create the perfect mix template, uh, where I share with you my whole process on how I build my own mix template. And if you're a Cubase user, you also have access to a free Cubase session that is going to help you to work on your own customized mix template. So check it out. The link is down below. Okay, now let's jump in Cubase and check the difference between pre and post fader sense. Okay, I have this audio channel, which is empty. It's only for the purpose of this video. And what I'm gonna do here is to create an effects channel track and add a signal to this channel. So uh, let's create a stereo effect with a delay. Let's call this one delay and click on add track. Uh, then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go under sense and uh, look for that uh, delay that I just created, which is right here. And I'm gonna activate the send, and the send is the signal that I am sending to this FX channel right here. Now there's a faster way to create an FX channel track for an audio channel. You select your channel, you right click, and you click on add FX channel to selected channels. And there you go. Um, now I'm gonna call this one again, delay. And right away by clicking on add track, the send level is gonna be activated automatically. So just one uh, less step to do. Uh, so that is the basic idea. Uh, so uh, I am sending a signal to this uh, channel in uh, parallel. I have two choices. I can send that signal post fader, which is the way it is by default. So by default, when you create an effects channel track and you assign a descend level to that effects channel track from an audio channel, descend is going to be a post fader send. So that means that the signal you send to that effects channel is coming after the fader. Okay, so if you bring down the fader, you're going to bring down the amount of signal sent to the effects channel. Okay, so let me show you. I'm gonna just uh, remove these two channels for now. And we're gonna look at this electric guitar uh, channel. Now, I have uh, this one sending a signal to the channel right beside it, which is again a delay on an effects channel track. So if I solo this channel and have a listen, Okay, so now I have some signal going into this delay channel. If I bring down the level of this channel. It's going to bring down the effect also. If I turn this one to pre-fader, so that means that the signal is going to be sent to the effects channel before the fader. Okay, so before the signal hits the fader. I'm just going to right click on my send level and choose move to pre-fader. Or you can just on top click on that pre-post fader icon. And now that, uh, uh, that level meter is going to turn blue. So that means you're sending your signal pre-fader. So let's do the same thing again. Now I only have the effect signal left without the dry signal, which is this one. So this is a pre-fader send. So now when to use pre-fader sends and when to use post-fader sends, uh, I'm gonna say right away that 95% of the time I am gonna use post-fader sends, uh, especially when I'm working with delays, reverbs, and these types of effects. Okay, so this is when I'm gonna use post-fader sends. So, so that's why it's there by default. This is how people are gonna work and send signal to an effects channel uh, most of the time. So it makes sense to make it by default. The reason is very simple. If I'm doing some automation uh, during the song and I wanna bring down the level of my electric guitar, I want the signal uh, of the reverb or delay to follow uh, that automation. 
Okay, so I don't want to end up with only the effect playing on its own. I want that whole thing, you know, that whole guitar sound to come down uh, equally, okay, the effect and the dry signal at the same time. Uh, so that's why uh, Pulse Fader is the way to go for most of the time. Now, let me show you um, in two situations where um, I'm gonna use a Pulse Fader Send. Uh, so the first example that I have right here is side chain compression on uh, a synth, for example. So I have these two VSTs, one is a pad and the other one is a uh, kind of a road type sound. So what I'm doing is I'm actually using a kick, a kick drum right here. Okay, I'm using this kick to trigger a compressor that I inserted on those two channels, which are the two VSTs, okay? So I have uh, the same uh, compressor on both channels. And I activated the sidechain option and on the kick, if I look at the sends, I am sending a signal straight from the kick to the side chain of the compressor. So every time the kick plays, it will activate uh, the compressor and then the sound is gonna be compressed. Um, and I'm gonna get that pumping effect um, that is found on a lot of pop records and EDM music. So let's have a quick listen. Now the problem if I make these uh, post fader and I bring the level of my kick down because I don't want to hear that kick, um, I'm going to lose uh, that effect, okay? Because I'm not going to send any more signal to the effects channel. So I'm going to bring these pre fader. So this will be able to bring uh, the level of the kick drum down and only keep the send level going into the uh, side chain of the compressor and I'm gonna get that effect. Okay, so that is one situation where uh, I'm gonna use a pre-fader send. Um, another situation is gonna be for uh, parallel compression. So I have a uh, drum kit right here, and I'm sending on this one, uh, just for, you know, for this video, I'm sending the signal of the full drum kit uh, to a compressor in parallel. So I have another channel, uh, an effects channel, where I have a compressor inserted. Okay, and I'm sending uh, the full drum mix straight on this channel and I'm balancing both. Now this compressor is gonna hit the drum sound pretty hard so it's gonna be over compressed and I'm just balancing uh, both signals together uh, so I get a lot of loudness out of those drums. If I bring the parallel compression down, this is what I get if I bring it up. Okay, now again, I'm sending the signal to the parallel compression in pre-fader mode. Uh, again, the reason is that I don't want that signal to change if I have to, uh, to bring down the level of my channel while I mix. Because what this is gonna do is gonna unbalance uh, my relationship between uh, my drums and my parallel uh, compression, and I want to make sure that these stays uh, intact. But what I need to think of, though, is that when I bring that channel down, I'm going to need to bring the parallel channel also down so I can keep that relationship going. Uh, so in this case, uh, I have two choices, and I actually made a full video on this that I'm going to link on top if you want to watch it. Uh, but basically, it goes like this. If I'm not moving my fader, it doesn't matter uh, whether my, uh, uh, my send is pre or post. Okay, but the minute I move the fader, this is where it's going to matter. So the goal here is to make sure that these two channels, the parallel channel and also my dry channel, um, are linked together. So I can use a VCA fader or I can route them into uh, their, own, uh, their own drum bus. And this is usually what I do on my side. I have a main mix bus uh, for drums and for all uh, groups of instruments. Um, that I use for this purpose. So if I need to bring my whole drum sound down, I'm gonna use that main mix uh, drum bus to do so, where I send my parallel channel and also my drum channel. 
I hope this is not too confusing. But again, uh, go watch this video on the pre fader sand relationship uh, that I did uh, talking about this specifically. Now, another situation where a pre fader sand is going to be useful is to create a special effect like vocal thralls, for example, uh, or in the situation where you just want to tame down the direct sound and leave that wet signal a bit more upfront. Then you can balance that out by having the pre fader active. So there you go, my friend. This is the main difference between pre and post fader sends. I hope that was helpful. If so, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Don't forget to leave your questions and comments down below. Until next time, take care and see you.